So we can plant a new course. We'll save a lot of fuel by going into that planet's orbit. Okay with me if there are no trigger happy lookouts down there who don't like orbiting strangers. We have a spectrum on plant life, and that's it. There's no other form of life down there. And what could be safer than a slew of pleasant purple meadows? Maureen, we're going into the orbit of that planet we're approaching. So stand by, dear. Yes, John. <laughs> for the robot. <laughs> when I told him, he practically blew his power pack with embarrassment. But he's okay now. He can't hardly wait. Put this in the cooling unit, will you, dear? I'm going to wash my hands. Mmm, delicious. I'll take some for later. No, <clears throat> oh, William. I was just arranging these lovely things. William, what in the world is the matter with your eye? Well, I was getting the robot's present down from my closet, and the door got in the way. It's absolutely ridiculous to have all this excitement over him. Aren't you happy about the robot's birthday party, Dr. Smith? No, I am not. Well, what's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. What are you going to give him for a present? It's a surprise. I see. You know, what this table lacks is, is real plants and ferns and stuff like that. I mean, pen is nice, but it's just plastic stuff. I'll bet there are lots of real ones down on that planet we're orbiting. But that's not going to do us any good, is it? Well, I think I'll go wrap my gift. Excuse me. Somehow we establish friendly relations with that bubble-headed booby in the event I need his help. But how shall I go about it? Yes, I have it. Flowers. Real flowers. I shall give him red roses for his birthday. Birthday indeed. <coughs> He won't be able to resist them, and he'll swear on dying loyalty to me. On my deed, we shall see. to the intercom. Plotting a new course. Two or three hours in the orbit. That's all we have in mind. We'll lock on the Cygnus Nebula for our escape path. Mm -hmm. Hold that course. Uh, one hour. All right, go. Full power. You're quite right, Major, not to visit that dreadful planet. For all we know, it's probably infested with all manner of savage beasts, poisonous serpents, predatory monsters. On the contrary, there's nothing down there but vegetation. Good. I mean, uh, how nice. We're still not visiting. We'd exhaust too much fuel on liftoff. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I quite understand. 
Well, everything's under control. I vote we set the ship on automatic and get below for that party. All right, I second the motion. Escape procedures in 90 minutes. <laughs> nothing. At any rate, this seems a little large. I'll see what else I can find. Mother Nature, how glorious. This will do nicely. What's that? Not a word. Probably just a creeping bow. Yes, I think I should have this one. Heavens, what a noisy pair of shields. Good day to you, stranger. Good day. said that. Was it... Was it you who spoke? I witnessed your crime. What crime? I committed no crime. You murdered them. You shouldn't have done that. Now you will pay for it. A life for a life.
birthday, you dear friend. A dear, dear friend. If only he were here with me now. Like all you denizens of the animal kingdom, you have no feelings for anyone but yourselves. Killer, that's what you are. One of those hideous, warm-blooded killers. No! No, I'm not! Watch it! You almost crushed the life out of my Pigia. There, there. So sorry. Forgive me. It was unintentional. Sure, that's what they all say. No! Stay away, do you hear? I ask you to please stay away. Oh! What is this? Oh, thank heaven, another human being. Well, not precisely. I was space wrecked here several hundred years ago, and Tybo was kind enough to save my life with a heart transplant. But you are human. No, it was a lettuce heart. A perfect wedding of two worlds. He's Tybo's best friend, aren't you, Willoughby? Do I have any choice? I know what might happen to me if I were your enemy. This is the enemy. He would grind the faces of the vegetable kingdom. Oh, that's not true. I wouldn't dream of it. But this is the opportunity we've been waiting for. A chance for the vegetable kingdom to come into its own. But I assure you, my dear sir, I adore vegetables. I always have. They're so full of vitamins and minerals and all good things. You'll be pleased to know that I eat them regularly, cooked or raw. Did you hear that, Willoughby? He eats vegetables! He enjoys eating vegetables! No, no, I don't enjoy it. A few moments ago, when you murdered those flowers, you signed your death warrant. But I've changed my mind. I'm commuting your sentence. To what? Willoughby! Check his potential for a new life form. Well, he... he looks all right. But his bones are terribly brittle. And the rest of him is a bit on the jellyfish side. He may never mature. Leave it to me, Willoughby. I'll find a life form to suit him. But I like my present life form. I'm devoted to it. I've had it for many years. Oh! I don't want another life form! Oh! Oh! Capabilities as a robot, I will try to be happy. And here's mine. It's nothing special, but there are no stores up here. Do not apologize, Will Robinson. I appreciate the thought as much as the gift. <laughs> Honey, uh, why don't you get the cake? Not sulking up top. 
My sensors indicate that he took off in the pod and landed it on the planet which we are now orbiting for private purposes of his own. Why didn't you tell us about this before? No one asked me. And as you are all well aware, I am not programmed to ask questions, only answer them. All right. Let's contact him. Happy birthday to me. Smith, this is the Jupiter. Come in. Do you read me? I read you with abundant clarity, Professor. All right, I want you and that pod back here right away. We leave in 30 minutes. And you, and you. May your journey flourish. May you reap the right fruits of accomplishment. Now listen to me. You can cut out all that... all that flowery talk and get right back here unless you want to get left behind. Oh, the folly of those who plant the seeds of threat in the soil of contentment. Such seeds will die unnourished by fear. The eloquent beauty of nature is all that I need. Look, are you still on that pod? Activate the pod's return unless I'm sure he's in it. Well, that was the pod radio that he was talking from, wasn't it? Well, I'm not sure. I think we'll have to take this ship down. Look, he's been a pain in the neck since the first day out. Complaining, lying, loafing, interfering. And now this border, who we never wanted in the first place, has found himself a new home. In the soil of contentment, no less. You want him back. Are you through? Yes, I've said my piece. All right, we're going down. Normal landing procedures. Okay. We'll go down and strap in. <laughs> Going to this. Oh, it should be about one mile in that direction. They will. We're going to need some machetes. Yes, sir. I'm not sure I'm right for this mission, John. I don't think I'll sound too sincere telling Smith how much we miss him and need him. All right, then. Maureen and Penny can go along and do the persuading, and you and I will be their bodyguards. Well, I was hoping you put it that way. Yeah, thanks, son. Uh, Judy, I'd like you, Will, and the robot to stay here at the ship. We'll call you right away if Dr. Smith should show. Oh, he won't, Judy. No, Nature Boy will have to be carried back here in a pine needle stretch. <laughs> Come on. them too. Every time I cut through a vine or a branch, like this. There it is again. John, you don't suppose... <laughs> no, please. Please. Oh, I know. It's perfectly silly. You were going to say that plants might feel pain when they're hurt. 
weren't you? Yes. Oh, I don't think it's so silly, Mom. Plant life isn't so different from human life, and maybe there's something in this atmosphere that lets us hear them when they're hurt. Well, that's a fine and sensitive theory, Penny, but this jungle's between us and the pod. We've got to cut our way through. Come on. Smith wasn't at the pod, and he probably wasn't. I would guess that they've gone to look for him. No. If that were true, Dad would have called me. Will, what are you doing? You're going to need one of these. I'm not sure we should leave the ship. Judy, they could be in the same kind of mess that Dr. Smith is in. Now, we're going to go out there and we're going to find them. But I'll go by myself if you'd rather oh, not. Oh, no. I'll go with you. All right. I'll leave a message and I'll meet you outside. <laughs> Judy and I became worried about you when we went to look for you. Now, if you should return before we do, is indeed jungle warfare, but this is not camouflage. Well, then what is it? It just grew, Will Robinson. I stopped to rest in the course of my sentry duties, and before I could say Will Robinson, these trailing plants crept up on me, totally incapacitating me. Perhaps that's why we haven't heard from Dad. The same thing may have happened to them. Well, we'd better get them off and... Sorry for hurting you, Robot. It is not I who am being hurt, Will Robinson. It is these plants. What you are hearing are their screams of pain. You mean they have feelings? Affirmative. It is my considered opinion that this entire planet is the domain of the vegetable kingdom and that we are its enemies. We are at war with the plant world. Dr. Smith didn't sound like he was at war with the plant world. Dr. Smith is a two-timer. He could have gone over to the enemy. Well, the important thing right now is to get to the pod. 
Sorry, plant. All right, let's go. And we'd better not stop to rest, any of us. Sorry. Pardon me. In the eloquent beauty oh. of nature is all that what is I it? to exert force, Will Robinson? Well, a little if necessary, but be gentle with him. He looks kind of sick. Come on, Judy. Sick indeed. I'm almost in full blue. All right, Dr. Smith. Let's move it. Unhand me, you insensitive clump, a brutish product of the mineral world. That's what you are. Personally, I would prefer to leave you right where you are, Dr. Smith, but I have my orders. Get going! <laughs> You are finally off your nature kick, Dr. Smith. Nature kick, indeed. I abhor nature. It always makes me sneeze. Shoot! <laughs> and if you stand there much longer, Dr. Smith, worse things may happen. You will take root. Look! Ah, what is this? What is this? Save me! Save me from this dreadful jungle! I will. However, that does not mean that my low opinion of you has changed. I am merely obeying Will Robinson's orders. Follow me, Dr. Smith. Hurry! Lead on! Lead on! If they keep up their hollering, I'm gonna start feeling sorry for them. Maybe that's what they want us to do. Give up and leave. Well, we're not going to. vegetable kingdom are up to their old tricks again. Tybo? All this is his, you know. He and his kind hate the animal world. 
You're telling me. Uh, do you think you can get us loose from these vines? Uh, yes, but don't tell Typo, because if he knew, he'd probably turn me into something awful. Like a red banana. Now, all you have to do is to talk to these plants. People don't talk to the plants enough, and they're very lonely. Now, please, let them grow. These are my friends. <laughs> you see? It's simple. Oh, thank you. Oh, have you seen any other people around here? I mean... Like me or like my brother Will here? Oh, brother and sister, are you? How charming. Oh, by the way, I'm Willoughby. Oh, I'm Judy, and this is my brother Will. How do you do? Do you know nice where the you. others are? Willoughby! Here, Willoughby! Here, boy! My master's voice. I better go, and I advise you to go, too. Because if you don't, he'll turn you into... Here, Willoughby! Oh, excuse me. Let's follow him. Maybe he can lead us to Mom and Dad. Get your machete, Don. Relax like the little one there. You'll find it so much easier to accept your future life forms if you don't fight it. What are you talking about? Think of yourselves as towering oaks, maybe. Lifting your branches to the sky. Shedding little acorns to grow more and more oaks like yourselves. You both have the bill for it, you know. You're crazy! Now let us out of here! I'm afraid that's impossible. Willoughby! Yes, sir. Keep an eye on them, Willoughby. I'm going to see how our brittle bone jellyfish is doing. <laughs> Look what's standing guard on us. Oh, I'm no guard. On the contrary, I, I do feel sorry for you, but I'm afraid of what Tybo might do to me if I helped you. Well, then, just tell us one thing. Is there a way out of here? Oh, 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 oh I'm afraid not. Uh, there's only Tybo's hydrostatic system underneath you, but... I'm afraid he'd be quite offended if you tried to get out that way. Well, offended or not, that's just what we intend to do. Come on, let's start digging.
penny who might feel the pain. It's the temperature. Something to do with the humidity. Don, let's check those coils. If you can heat this place, it must be able to cool it, too. But how? I don't know. Let me see. Here. Let's try this one. If we can bring the temperature down 30 degrees, we've got a chance. Look. Snow. Now, oh, we've got to work fast. That hydrostatic system you mentioned. It may not be a way out of here. But if it controls Tybo's water supply for the entire area, and we take it over... How do we get through that metal? We've got to try, that's how. Come on! the difference between a pressure valve and a shut-off valve. It's got a fresh break in it, so we must have come this way. Strain. Let it happen. Let him do what he likes with me. Let him change me into an orchid, a papaya tree, a fragrant bougainvillea. It's all the same to me now. You have excellent horticultural taste, Dr. Smith, but I still have my orders. 
Go away, Ninny, go away. But I cannot compute is why you came here in the first place. It's all your fault. Oh, why did I do it? How could I know that coming down here to pluck a posy for your birthday would end in such disaster? A posy for me? Yes, for you. I did not know you cared that much, buddy. Now you know, buddy. Come on, buddy. I will pick you up and carry you bodily as I would carry a motherless child. Go away! Don't touch me, you ungrateful underling! Go and get me some help and tell them I shall require a stretcher. If that is a direct order, that is the way it will have to be. But I cannot leave without giving you one helpful hint. What is that? Keep moving, Dr. Smith. Keep moving. Thank you, Booby, but I do not require your advice. Very well, Dr. Smith, but do not say I did not warn you. Be gone! The advice of a tin-plated traitor. Indeed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
you animals will do to avoid living a better life. And the little one was going to be so pretty in her new life. I had a, a training our beauties in mind for her. Best I'll be able to do now is something in a much lower class golden rod or mustard or something. What we've done, Tybo, is to try to preserve what we are. Not what you'd have us be. Can't leave you alone for a minute. The moment my back is turned, there you go, try to kill yourselves. Why can't you be meek and mild like Willoughby? Willoughby, where is he? Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Probably ran off to warn me. All right, this may cause you a momentary discomfort. Protect yourselves. <laughs> you to go back to the ship and stay there till dawn. If you haven't heard from us by then, take the ship and get out of here. Look, Dan, the robot's not far from here. He could crash through this easily. Now, that's an idea. All right, get him. Worth a try. Come on. Give me a hand. Stop 
nibbling on Dr. Smith. He says it jars him. I'm sorry, but I have Tybalt's permission to nibble on the rosette of all Umbelliferum. Just so long as I don't swallow the seeds. But Dr. Smith isn't a real Umberla. He's not a real celery stock. He's an animal just like us. Now you are appealing to my kinship with my fellow creatures again. You, you, you know how timid I am. Besides, I'm hungry. Now lay off, Willoughby. Dr. Smith doesn't have that much hair as it is. He's going to look horrible when we change him back if you keep plucking at him. Change me back? It's out of the question. May I say that never, never have I been as happy as I am now. You know, there is something rather sturdy and vigorous about celery. The good earth, the shining sun, the pleasant companionship of one's fellow vegetables. Of course, I could do with a bit more rain, perhaps. Dr. Smith, you're acting like a real stock of celery. Of course I I look like celery. I draw moisture from the soil like celery. I feel the pulsing crunch of life like celery. Purple, I am a real stalk of celery. I think perhaps I should apologize for my appearance. A good soaking rain would freshen me up so. Judy, you'd better stay here with Dr. Smith. I'll take the robot and go find Mom and Dad. Come on, robot. We've got a big job ahead of us. some sort of sentimental appeal, am I correct? You could call it that if you like, I guess. <laughs> I know exactly how you animals think. All heart and sympathy for each other. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, I know you're a real vegetable whiz, and it must be great to be able to change one kind of a life form into another. Well, I'm glad one of you animals appreciates us. Go on. But it's all wrong. Why change Dr. Smith into a stock of salary? And what do you think you're going to do with my parents and Penny and Don? Why can't you just be satisfied to be what you are and let us be what we are? I mean, I'll admit that we eat certain vegetables sometimes. 
but there are plenty of other plants that we just grow to look at and admire because they're so beautiful. How would you like it if someone were going to monkey around with you and turn you into a water bug? You've got to change Dr. Smith back. You've got to let us all go. Impossible. Give up all my grand plans for you. Oh, incidentally, I have a very fine plant in mind for you. A magnificent young sapling. A, a willow, perhaps, or a silver birch. John. Run, Will! Run! <laughs> station again. Transplant here, a transfusion here. He's a regular plant surgeon. You know, sometimes he lets me act as his nurse. I, I, I carry his instruments into his pouch here. What kind of instruments? Well, here, here, have a look. Oh, be careful of that one. That is a sharp one. What does he do with this? Uh, shots. Lethal shots. Sometimes he has to put a, a sick plant out of its misery. You know how it is. Isn't there something he does sometimes that, well, changes things back to what they were? Oh, yes, he often does that when the new uh, plant life doesn't work out. Perhaps there's something like that we could do for Dr. Smith. Do? Get him back to what he was. Oh, but he's such a healthy-looking stock of celery. Oh, he'd rather be what he was, Willoughby, not what he is. No, I would not. Let us not interfere with Tybo's magnificent handiwork. A celery is as a celery does. Oh, he doesn't know what he's saying. Please, Willoughby. Help me change him back to his former self. Oh, Tybo won't like that. Neither will I. Oh, please, Willoughby. Please help me. After all, you are one of us. Well, I suppose his celery oils could be dried up. Oh, dear. I shall wither away. Well, only the vegetable part would wither. We might be able to preserve the animal part. Here. One drop of this will do it. Supposing we can't preserve the animal part? Well... Tybo will probably make a study of his remains to find out what went wrong. Then I guess it's up to Dr. Smith to make the choice. I already have. I stay as I am. And don't you dare try any of your murderous animal experiments on me. Oh, you look fine now, Dr. But what do you do when the bad weather comes? Dance. 
storms, floods, why you could be washed away. Or there could be a long drought and you just dry up. You just go to seed and blow away. Oh dear. Perhaps I'd better have a drop of that stuff after all. Just one drop on the top of the head, that does it best. Now this, this won't hurt very much, just turn your head. All right, Dr. Smith. Careful. Here I go. There. Oh. I think John's done it. We've got the stall if you join us back. I will. You must be getting awfully tired of playing this game with us. Tired? I barely started. You'll make a powerful looking teakwood tree. Uh, where's the other animal? Tell me something, Tybo. Why do you want to turn me into a, a teakwood tree? It would be one of my better achievements. Are you forgetting something, aren't you? You see, you're forgetting human resistance. And you can't stop that unless you, unless you kill us. If you kill us, then you can't change us, can you? You mean you'd rather die than be a tree? Like they say, you've seen one tree, you've seen them all. I thought I could do this with a minimum of trouble, but I see now a crash transmutation is necessary. It must have more steam. <laughs> Take the children back to the ship. Prepare for liftoff. All right. Come on, we'll get Will.
wonderful. We better stay with him or we'll miss the transformation. Moisture! Moisture! I need moisture! There he is! Moisture! It's a human instinct not to let anything or anyone die of thirst. I'm all. Dad, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Help your mother get back to the ship. She's got the children. Poor Tybo. He didn't know how to live and let live. I'll have to nurse him back to health, I suppose. I was thinking that perhaps you'd like to come with us. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you for the offer, but I'll have to take care of Tybo. All right. It must have been a dreadful agony for him to realize that you died of dehydration. Died my foot. I happen to be alive. <laughs> for Tybo, you are dead. <laughs> You want? I need a little help until my power systems regenerate themselves. You would not turn me down, would you, old buddy? Don't old buddy me, you old booby. Come along! Stay tuned for some exciting scenes from next week's show. Next week, the space family Robinson is marooned on the deadly junk planet. Mr. Junk Man! Why is it moving? Got it! It's gone. It's a pity. A lot of good metal is lost. Junkyard of Space on Lost in Space, in color, right here on this channel.